nestled in the majestic hills of normal Alabama, adjacent to the rocket city of Huntsville. Bulldog Nation, it's Senior Day, Heroes Military Appreciation Day, and High School and Community College Day. It's time to get started with On the Hill Live. Yeah. Yeah. Live from Lewis Cruz Stadium on the campus of Alabama A&M University, this is On the Hill, live with Dr. Paul A. Bryant. We are so excited to be back here on the Hill Live. I am your host, Dr. Paul A. Bryant. And I'm your co-host, Ty Floyd. It's a busy day on the Hill. Today we celebrate our seniors in athletics and our heroes in the military. You know, it's a, it's going to be a great day, Ty. It's military appreciate camo day. Yes, my camo is at home, but I will have on camo later. Oh, yeah, you have to bring your camo. You know, I, I'm a little hoarse today, but we're still going to get it. Yes, we are. And, you know, I'm excited today because we have a guest on the show. He's one of my colleagues. He's the Vice President of Research. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Majid El Dweek. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Dr. Dweek. Thank you, thank you. So, Dr. Dweek, he and I have been going back and forth. Dr. Dweek was supposed to be here a couple of shows ago. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but he's one of my colleagues on the cabinet. So, Dr. Dweek, just how do you like being here on the Hill and being on cabinet? It is exciting. So it is, uh, it's always, I look forward to the cabinet meetings because of the dynamic that is happening in the cabinet meeting where we're sharing ideas and uh, we're discussing, you know, what's the next exciting thing that is happening here at Alabama a &M. It's always look forward to that meeting on Tuesday. <laughs> it is fun. It, it is, fun. it is, it is. <laughs> So, Dr. DeWeek, with the work that you do, how do you equip students to be the next leaders, innovators, and world changers? Good, good. So, when I share about, you know, Alabama and, and research, so the value proposition that we have in research is our students. Yes. Those are our value proposition. So, when we talk about, you know, research opportunities, so we rely on our students to work on those opportunities, those research opportunities. So what, what you'll find is when you go to the research laboratory, you will find the mentor, which is the faculty member who has, who developed the idea and bring the funding. But the real work is done mostly by our students. So we tend to focus on giving skills, the best skills to our students so they can be well equipped to go to the workforce. You know, you, you talked, talked about, about funding. funding. You This year you had a, a record of funding. And, and talk about the last couple of years, sure. how much money we've had come in through research. Absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. And again, it's all about students. Correct. It's all about students. So research is another activity that bring revenue to the university. Yes. So happy to share with you, last year we broke a record. So 12.4% increase from the previous year. So we surpassed 70 million. This is in 2023. And we are, uh, we are on track for this year to even break that record. So we're going to share that information soon yeah. and we will be publicizing so you're talking the, over 70 million dollars in research dollars that's significant specifically when we're trying to get to an r2 r1 status can you talk a little bit about that absolutely absolutely, absolutely. so and this is one of the aim that i have is for our institution to become a research institution r2 classified as r2 yeah. and i can tell you that we have, there are two criterias to be in that classification as R2. One is the expenditure, which uh, the research exp expenditure has to be five million or above. Yes. But happy to share with you that we have been surpassed that amount. So we are over 11 million in our research expenditure. Yeah. So right now what we're working on is the PhD graduate students. Yes. And this is what, what we're, we're focusing on so we can get that number, which is 20 students to graduate, and then we'll be able to be in the R2 designation. That's awesome. That's awesome. Some of the work you do involves former Alabama A&M students. How impactful do you think it is for students to work alongside those who were once in their shoes? Perfect, perfect question. So. It, it is exciting. So when you look at uh, our slogan, uh, start here and go anywhere, it is true. 
it is true and it's a fact that whenever I go to and visit those different agencies, I always get surprised that we have an alum, we have a former student who is in those agencies. And it's always exciting to see how much they wanted to help Alabama A&M yes. and how, how much, much they, they want to give back their, you know, their institution. So definitely we have uh, leaders yeah. that been graduating from Alabama A&M and now they are in executive positions. I can tell you executive positions. And they're there again to help us and help our institution to excel further. So our last question is, how do you work with athletics? How does your research work with athletics? Very good question. Well, let me share this, you know, this piece of information. I really commend you for your focus that our athletic students not only excel in sport, but also excel in the academic. Yes. I always hear you when we are in cabinet meeting, how students are excelling on the academic side. Yes. And that also is exciting because I can see that we start to talk about research. Yes. We start to talk about actually health and food and how we can implement some, some of those ideas on the research side where we can bring some of the some of those ideas to athletic so definitely there will be room again to collaborate with athletic so and this is now our goal that we are working on you know doc, again, again we, we appreciate, appreciate you being you. here that's we work so close together uh, I, again, I thank you. I thank you for being a colleague. I thank, thank you for you. being a partner with athletics. And uh, and as you know, we're always going to be a part of research. Absolutely, so, uh, absolutely. Stay back. Stay with us. We'll be right back with on the hill live. Greetings, Bulldog Nation. In 2025, Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University will celebrate 150 years. As we approach this sesquicentennial milestone, our time has come. As a moment when our campus is growing, enrollment is surging, and research and academic programs are reaching new heights, the world is seeking the kind of diverse, driven, talented leaders who has always defined Alabama A&M. It's our time to celebrate our rich heritage and reimagine a bold future for Alabama A&M. It's our time to step forward and embrace a pivotal role in the future of our city, our state, and our nation. Together, we will light the way forward and spark new possibilities by elevating and energizing a growing destination campus, equipping our researchers, faculty, and professionals of the future with the latest in STEM tools and technology, and empowering scholars ready to lead and serve on a new scale. And it all starts with your support. The next chapter is ours to write. And as we prepare for 2025, you can get involved now. And I ask each of you to answer the call of this institution with service is sovereignty by helping us light the way for the celebration of 150 years of Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. Go Bulldogs. Now, the Tennessee Valley Certified Most Accurate Forecast from the Fox 54 Weather Impact Team. It's going to be a beautiful day for some Alabama A&M football. Look at this. It is not at all going to feel like the early days of November. As a matter of fact, temperature is going to hang out in the upper 70s. Maybe, maybe we get to that 80 degree mark. The average high temperature for this time of year, right around 69 or 70 degrees. But look, 78 at 2, 78 at 3, 79 degrees by 4 p.m. And then backing off a degree as we head into that 5 o'clock hour, 78 degrees at 5 o'clock. I want to show you the next seven days as well. 78 degrees on Sunday, 79 Monday. 
Monday. Yeah, we're going to stick with this warmth across the Tennessee Valley. 80 degrees both Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. 78 next Thursday. 81 degrees next Friday. Now we are going to be dry for the Alabama A&M game. Of course, that's always good news. Nobody wants to deal with any rain, but there is rain in the forecast. Even a few thunderstorms next Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Welcome back to On the Hill Live. Tennis coach, Coach Willis Monday. I pronounced it right. Yes, yes you got it right. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for having so, me. So, Coach, we're excited. Tell us just how you've been since you've been here uh, at Alabama A&M, how many years, and, and then we're going to talk about that national championship. But tell us a little bit But how about your, your stay here. Um, I've been at the program for 12 years now. 12? Yeah, 12 years. And uh, we've gone through the process of building the program. Uh, now I believe we're at a very stable place and uh, we're ready to compete for championships. Championships. Well, you've already done that. Mm -hmm. you, you competed for championships, but you built this program really basically from the ground up. I know we've had some successes in the past, but you really have gone from a part-time worker to a full-time worker and built this program. Was that hard work? Tell us about that. Uh, it's a lot of hard work, uh, however, it's not just uh, by myself, I've had the uh, support uh, from yourself as administration, the president, uh, my wife has been an instrumental part of my success, uh, always supporting me because there's times where we've doubted ourselves because of results and the team just not performing as well. Um, but you keep, you got to keep believing, you know, and uh, every little uh, success that we've had has just been pushing us forward and pushing me forward. So uh, it's one step at a time. And now I think uh, we've gone from crawling, we walked, and now we're ready to run yes. and keep sprinting. Good. One of the biggest parts of the program is obviously the student athletes. For a prospective student athlete in your program, what do they have to possess character-wise and athletic ability to be a part of this team? Uh, character-wise, we want um, kids who have integrity who are always going to do the right thing, go to class. Um, Tennis-wise, obviously, we love kids who are coachable, who want to come here and get better. I always say you can only pour into a half glass. If you think your glass is full, then there's no need of coming to Alabama A&M Tennis. Uh, I want kids who are going to coach and uh, kids who want to be a part of our program. That's great. You know, I watch, I watch your student athletes perform they are not only performing extremely well on the field, but they perform extremely well in the classroom. Is that a priority to you? Yes, yes that's a big part of our program. We stress that. Um, we make, I make sure when I talk to potential student athletes, I let them know that our program, we want to win in class and we want to win on the court. So that's, a, that's something that we stress and uh, we expect that from them. So you coach, coach both men and women. What percentage of your student athletes are above a 3.0? Uh, with my women, all of them are above a 3.0. Yeah. You know, so they're doing very, very well. Yeah. And with my guys, I would say 90% oh, above okay. a 3.0. I'm just going to cor correct you. It's 95. But 95. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you have international players, and I'm sure that maybe coming to Alabama is a little bit of a culture shock. So how do you get them acclimated to being in this area and performing so well academically and athletically? I'll give credit to the campus. You know, our student body is very welcoming. Um, a lot of our international students, when they come in, they always talk about how people are nice here. So maybe it's a Southern thing or Alabama a and thing. But our students, our international students, feel very comfortable on campus because the campus is very welcoming. You know, you, you were a student athlete here. Right. Right. Um, talk about your experience as a student athlete. I had a wonderful time on the Hill. Um, and I'm just going to echo what I said. I, the student body was very welcoming. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've got to thank my coach. Coach Thomas Colvin, yeah. who gave me a chance to play Division I tennis. Uh, tired administration, but I had a great time on the hill. Uh, the tennis spot was good. 
Uh, my instructors were very supportive, uh, professors. And uh, I, I bleed maroon and white. Those are the only two colors I know. And I'm glad you do. Tell us quickly about the HBCU National Championship. Well, we recently won the HBCU National Championship, which was the first in the history of our program. So I want to congratulate those young ladies for competing and representing our university well. And uh, I hope that that's just the beginning of many more to come. You know, you were, um, you were honored by the uh, mayor this past week. Yes. Uh, and, and tell us about that quick. That was wonderful. I want to thank the Office of the Mayor for recognizing our women's tennis program. Uh, it felt good to be honored and uh, you look at it, when we go out there and compete, we think we're just competing for Alabama A&M and ourselves. But to be recognized by the city, it just goes to show that we have a lot more supporters and we're doing it for a lot more people than just Alabama A&M. You're right, you're right. So, Coach, we really appreciate you being on the show today and we congratulate you. And when we come back, we're going to have a, a, a person that is well known in the city, uh, the executive director of Huntsville Sports. Make sure to stay with us. Greetings, Bulldog Nation. In 2025, Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University will celebrate 150 years. As we approach this sesquicentennial milestone, our time has come. As a moment when our campus is growing, enrollment is surging, and research and academic programs are reaching new heights, the world is seeking the kind of diverse, driven, talented leaders who has always defined Alabama a and It's our time to celebrate our rich heritage and reimagine a bold future for Alabama a and It's our time to step forward and embrace a pivotal role in the future of our city, our state, and our nation. Together, we will light the way forward and spark new possibilities by elevating and energizing a growing destination campus, equipping our researchers, faculty, and professionals of the future with the latest in STEM tools and technology and empowering scholars ready to lead and serve on a new scale. And it all starts with your support. The next chapter is ours to write. And as we prepare for 2025, you can get involved now. And I ask each of you to answer the call of this institution with service is sovereignty by helping us light the way for the celebration of 150 years of Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. Go Bulldogs! The Tennessee Valley Certified Most Accurate Forecast from the Fox 54 Weather Impact Team. It's going to be a beautiful day for some Alabama A&M football. Look at this. It is not at all going to feel like the early days of November. As a matter of fact, temperature is going to hang out in the upper 70s. Maybe, maybe we get to that 80 degree mark. The average high temperature for this time of year, right around 69 or 70 degrees. But look, 78 at 2, 78 at 3, 79 degrees by 4 p.m. And then backing off a degree as we head into that 5 o'clock hour. 78 degrees at 5 o'clock. I want to show you the next seven days as well. 78 degrees on Sunday, 79 Monday. Yeah, we're going to stick with this warmth across the Tennessee Valley. 80 degrees both Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. 78 next Thursday, 81 degrees next Friday. Now we are going to be dry for the Alabama A&M game. Of course, that's always good news. Nobody wants to deal with any rain, but there is rain in the forecast. Even a few thunderstorms next Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Welcome back to On the Hill Live. Bojangles, Bojangles Breakfast, and we're so happy to have Bojangles uh, sponsoring our breakfast this morning. We have a real celebrity on our show today. <laughs> He's uh, known in Huntsville uh, sports 
and this is Mr. Mark Russell. Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Y'all are so welcoming. Hey, well, you, you know, know, we always, if you ever want to get or see Alabama A&M gear, <laughs> Mark Russell is the one who has it all. Uh, Mark. I love you. <laughs> yes, Mark, tell us a little bit about your job at, in Huntsville. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's quite simply, we do sports. Uh, we do sports for Huntsville. We're in charge of sports tourism for the city. A uh, long time ago, we were having trouble filling up hotel rooms on the weekends, and we thought sports may be an avenue to help our businesses out on the weekend. Yes. And so we formed the Sports Commission, and my job is to bring in tournaments and, and really to work with our partners and, and make sure that we're doing everything we can to provide a great sports com community and environment. Yeah, you have done that. You have really reached out to Alabama A&M and have been a true partner in everything we do. You know, we talked about our sports and we said we want to make them events and partnering with you all you have said that they are events so I want to tell you personally thank you for that and just how important it is for Alabama A&M to be partners with you all. Yeah, yeah and it's certainly important the Huntsville Sports Commission uh, universities lead sports tours in most cities and y'all are doing it uh, we want to provide a great experience for all the people coming into Huntsville so that they leave they really want to come back to Huntsville and it's really important that uh, we provide that great experience because everybody can have the same facilities or even have better facilities than Huntsville has, but we want to provide the best experience. Huntsville as a city has seen a lot of growth in the area of athletics. What do you attribute to that success? Well, well again, again we, we need to because we need to fill up our hotels on the weekend but I think uh, sports improve the quality of our life I mean we're in the south it's sports are really important today football is so important and yes. you lose a few games and you find out how really important it is right Absolutely. right AD Absolutely. and so uh, it's important I think that we, we provide that to our citizens because uh, I love sports I love everything about it and it's a really important part of my life an important part of my family's life and I'm sure an important part of all y'all's lives yes. you were you were instrumental in, in getting our tennis women's tennis team recognized. How did you form that with the mayor? And well, the, the mayor's a big supporter of Alabama A&M University. We talk about it all the time, and so we're trying to bridge the gap between a Alabama A&M and the city. We're trying to recognize each other. We, uh, you come to our lunches. We're trying to all be together and talk about things that we jointly can work on and be partners, true partners. Yes, yes, yes. When you look at the landscape of HBCU sports and how much it's grown over the years, from your vantage point, how exciting is it, and especially here at Alabama a well, I, I, I love the experience here. I mean, I, I would be here all the time if I, if I didn't have to work. <laughs> um, but I think HBCUs, uh, they provide, it is a different experience. You know, I've been to a lot of football games. There's none like being here for Alabama and University. And, and I just enjoyed watching the band walk in. You know, it's so exciting you know to do that to be here for that and I and the culture here is just different it's uh, unique to me and I like watching it and I enjoy being part of it you know I watch you I uh, watch you work uh, a lot of people don't know you're an official Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Talk about that. So last night I, I was a high school football official uh, on the field, and uh, it was good training for politics. Uh, uh, our jobs, uh, there, there's no other ones like it where people can yell at you and you have to make quick decisions. And sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong, and you yeah. do, but you have to go on. And so I enjoy being around sports. It, again, it's an opportunity for me to be with the kids. It's kind of a community service for me. And I just like, I like the bands. I like the pomp and circumstances. Of, of football. Yeah, yeah, you, you talked talk about, about politics. You want to explain what you what do you used to do in your life? Sure, sure. I was a city councilman here for 16 years and uh, worked a lot on downtown issues and also a lot on sports. Uh, represented Edmonton Heights, a lot of the areas around Alabama and University. So worked closely with the university to try to improve the campus and and still want to do those things. Uh, uh, the 16 years taught me a lot about Huntsville. I learned a lot about our citizens, yeah. but uh, I enjoyed every moment of but it was time to move on so I, I'm I'm enjoying being in sports full-time <laughs> I'm sure that somewhere behind who you are now is a little boy who fell in love with sports and never looked back what would you say about your life today yeah, I, I'm blessed. I'm lucky. Uh, I never thought I would be able to end my career in sports. You know, uh, when I was growing up, I just didn't think about sports being an avenue as a job, as employment. And so that's been really good for me. Uh, 
you know, if, if I could have it, I'd be the general manager of the Dallas Cowboys here or something like that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. so, I don't know if I could approve them, but I, uh, I, I just like being around sports and, and I believe in sports. And I believe it provides leadership opportunities for our children that we won't get anywhere else. Yeah. You know, I agree with you. Sports has, has done so much for us, so many people, and you're an example of that. And, and we truly appreciate you being on the show. Yeah. You, we are going to continue to be partners here with uh, with you with the Huntsville City. And but before I let you go, how critical is it for us to be partners with the Huntsville City School System? Oh, it's huge. Uh, we we've got to, like I said, sports provides those leadership opportunities to our children. So we've got to work together not only in sports but just in educating our children. And so uh, Alabama and University is the leader in our community, and then continue to be. Yes, yes. Well, I, I I am so grateful to have Mark Russell here on the show today. Mark, we thank you. We. We look forward to seeing you around campus and always wearing our gear. It's basketball season. You always come to the game, so I want to make sure I see you all at the game as well. I'll, I'll be there. Season, season ticket holder, holder having fun. fun. Yeah, and you heard what he said. He's a season ticket holder mm -hmm. for basketball. He comes to every football game that he can. And so we want to, again, thank you for your support and your guidance. Again, thank you, sure. uh, Mark Russell. Thank now you. we have some game day information. We have some game day information. The Bulldogs will take on Southern uh, University today at 2 o'clock. Tickets are available and may only be purchased at the AAMU Event Center or TM Elmore Gymnasium. Also, for game day parking, you must download the Clutch app to pay for parking. You may find out more about the Clutch app on aamusports.com. Don't forget, our Lewis Cruz Stadium has a clear bag policy and it will strictly be enforced. To ensure you stay up to date for all Alabama A&M athletics, we have a lot of great content. Make sure to follow us on social media, Instagram, X, and YouTube. Just search for AAMU Athletics. You know, Ty, as we as we wrap up this show, again, we have to thank Bojangles. We want to thank Bo's Famous Wings. We want to thank our team. We have an outstanding team here at Alabama A&M. But more importantly, I don't know if y'all heard them, I have to thank my baseball program. Yeah! The baseball team. The one thing we can count on all the time is having the baseball program here to support, not only supporting here, but they support helping parking. They do it all. Our student athletes are the ones who runs the show. Baseball, baseball, and we want to thank our, our new interim coach, Coach Lou Whitlow. So we welcome him to the hill as the head coach. He was always the assistant, but we welcome him to the as the head. And uh, uh, Ty, are you ready for today? I am ready for it today. <laughs> I'm excited. You sure? Yes. I actually kind of want to suit up myself, get out there and play. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> if you suit up, I'm going to suit up. All right. That'll be our post-Halloween costumes. <laughs> 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 I think we'd be unstoppable. We got to tell Coach Maynard that we're ready. Stretch. Warm up. No, I'm good. So, <laughs> <laughs> but again, this is On the Hill Live, and I thank you all. I want to thank everybody who's watching. We thank all our supporters, uh, all the people who have donated to this cause. And as always, Go, go Bulldogs! Oh, we're going to do that again. As always, Go, go Bulldogs! Go Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this edition of On the Hill Live with Dr. Paul A. Bryant.